Hi, in this presentation I'm going to show you how to get started with Scratch. Scratch is the best way to begin making computer projects. Like what? Well, you can make movies and animation, create art and tell jokes. You can create interactive projects to teach others things, like this project about the New Horizons probe that journeyed across the solar system to reach Pluto. Most people use Scratch to make games. Seriously, lots of games. Now, if you follow along with this presentation, I'll show you how to make three projects. So let's get started. Since you're probably watching this presentation in the browser, open a new window, and in the address bar at the top, type scratch.mit.edu. Now here I'm using Google's Chrome browser on a Macintosh, so while the edges of the window may look different than yours, the Scratch website should be similar. Now in the top right corner of this page, click the Join Scratch button. Then, create yourself a new account with a username and a password. Now remember, don't use your real name. Make something up. Also, never share your password not even with your friends. Making a Scratch account is free, so have them get their own account. Now when I give this class, I often have parents in the room. They're usually concerned, as they should be, with any website that's asking for personal information. Now all this is optional. They just want to know what kind of people are using Scratch so they can make it better. If you're a minor, pause the presentation. Make sure you're comfortable before filling out the rest of the form. The email address is only used to reset your password if you forget. I haven't received any spam from MIT. Before we continue, let me just say that the Scratch community is a very positive group. Every programmer there is at different levels, so remember to always be nice when you post comments. Now that you have a Scratch account, let's make our first project by clicking the Create button. Making projects in Scratch is a bit like putting on a puppet show. You need a stage where all the action takes place. Of course, stages often have some nice scenery or other background, and Scratch does too. Every puppet show needs puppets or actors. In Scratch, we call them sprites, and they're more like the hands in a puppet since each one can have different costumes. Now, a puppet show wouldn't be very interesting without directions for the puppets. We call these scripts. This is how your Scratch project uh, looks, so let me show you around. In the top left corner, below the menu, is the stage, and below that is the sprite box. In my example, I have two sprites, but when you first create a new project, you'll start with only one. Now this sprite appears on the stage, but the butterfly sprite doesn't. We have the sprite box so that we can click on the sprite we want to change. The section in the middle is the block palette box. Everything your sprites could do is shown in one of the groups at the top. We drag those blocks out of the palette box over to the scripts area on the right to tell the sprite what to do. So, let's make a new project, shall we? Our first project will be making that cat walk, maybe jump, maybe even do a bit of a dance. We'll begin by making this script for our cat. Now this is an introduction to Scratch, so I'm going to walk through this step by step. And step one will be the top block. Keep in mind, we can build a script uh, in any order. We can even reorder them, but this block is used to begin our scripts. Now to find that block, you first click on the events group. All blocks are colored to match the particular group. Now when you see the block you want, you click and hold the mouse button and drag it to the scripts area on the right side. This block is now associated with the sprite. Now let's attach the repeat block. Notice the repeat block is yellow. This means we need to click the control block group for all the yellow blocks. Now we drag the repeat block out to the right, just like before, but this time we attach it to the start block that is already there. When a block gets close enough to attach to another block, a white line appears. 
this not only shows where it can attach, but when you have a lot of blocks, it shows you where it'll go. This is why when we drag over the weight block, we want to make sure that the white line appears inside the repeat block. Now don't worry about much about what these blocks will do, as I'll explain them soon enough. Right now we're concentrating on how to build scripts from blocks. Now the rest of the blocks are different colors, so we'll click each block group and drag and attach the blocks we want. Begin by clicking the blue motion block group and drag the move block. Now, notice we can insert it in many places and each position is shown with the white line. Now in this case it doesn't matter where we place it as long as it is inside the repeat block. Now, click the purple looks block group and drag the next costume block and attach it inside the repeat block too. Finally, Click the pink sound group and drag and attach the play drum block. Now by default, this block will play a snare drum sound, so click the black triangle to open up a menu of options and select the side stick instrument. Let's shorten how long the instrument plays by clicking in the white area and changing it to 0.1. We might as well change the weight block from 1 second to 0.1 second 2. Now, press the pause button on this movie to stop and you finish up. Now that our script is done, we can start it. We do this in two ways. First, double click on any stack of blocks to run it. Since our stack begins with the, uh, this block, we can click the green flag to start it running. Now to stop, press this button. You might enjoy watching our production on a larger stage. If so, you press this button. Congratulations on your first Scratch program. Now that you've seen the cat sprite walk across the stage, you may be able to figure out what each block does. The top one says to start running any blocks attached to it when the green flag is clicked. The repeat says to do any blocks inside it some number of times. In this case, 10. The move block shifts the sprite some number of pixels to the right. However, we can change the sprite's direction. The sprite has two images or costumes and the next costume block alternates between them. This creates a bit of an animation for our walking cat. The pink play drum block is pretty obvious now, as is the weight block. But what if you didn't know what a block did? For instance, what does the glide block do? To find out, you can either right-click on the block to select Help, or click the Help button right here. The Help panel has a list of tutorials as well as sections for each block group. Since the Glide block is blue, we click the Motion block, or the Motion link, and then we click the Glide button, the link, <laughs> the Glide link to have Scratch tell us what that block does. Now you click this block to, uh, to go back to the Help entries, and you can click this button to close the Help panel. Now, perhaps you want to pause the presentation and do a bit of exploring before we attempt some programming exercises. Here are three extensions that you can make to your walking cat project. Pause this presentation while you work through them, and when you're done, I will explain one way to accomplish the first two. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed exploring Scratch and hopefully you were able to make the cat walk up the screen. Now, you may have noticed this block. We usually use this in a repeat block to spin a sprite, but you could use it to change the cat's walk from its current direction of 90 degrees, where 0 degrees is straight up. If you change the 15 to something like 40, the end result would have been 50 but that means you can only use it once. 
Now the block could, this block could be used to set the sprite's direction. Here we change the 90 to a 50 and insert it at the top of the stack. Another way is to first click the sprite's info button and then you can drag this blue line right here to point the sprite in any direction you wish. Now while you could use the move block with the number of minus 10 to move the cat backwards, what if you wanted to have it turn around? First, we click this black triangle and select a menu and point the, ba the cat back to facing to the right. Next, we click this duplicate tool button and then we click this block. Notice it duplicates the block we clicked on and everything attached below it. And finally, we attach the copy to the bottom of the stack so that we can have the cat walking to the right and then to the left. Just make sure you change the direction by clicking the black triangle and selecting the right entry. Wait, what happened? I don't think that's what you wanted. I mean, the cat did walk back but not really the way we wanted. To fix that, go back to the Sprite Information block, and you'll notice the rotation style has three buttons. The one on the left allows the Sprite to point in any direction. The one on the far right doesn't allow the Sprite to turn at all visually, but the middle button allows the Sprite to face only left and right. Now the cat will right walk to the right and then to the left. I'll let you work on making the cat dance while I show you how to move blocks around. Reordering blocks in Scratch is a little tricky, so let's suppose I wanted to move this block here to this point here. First, drag the block to move. This breaks it the stack in two. Next, Drag the block just below it to break the stack again. Now take this new stack and reattach it to the, uh, to the top. This means that the block you wanted is now free to be reinserted into the correct place. Let me walk through that again, this time with a little movie. You break, you break again, you then reattach, and then you can insert the, the block anywhere you wanted it. Time for another project. We will create a puppet show based on some graphics and a project all ready for you. To begin, either type the address at the top of the screen or click the link in the notes section below this presentation. This will bring up a project. Click the green flag button in the center to have the two puppets act to tell a riddle. It's a very bad riddle, but you like puns, don't you? After you watch the show, don't worry, I'll wait. Click this button to download this project and let you see how it was made. Now you can click on each sprite to see their scripts, but I put them side by side to make it easier to see what's going on. When the green flag is clicked, the stacks for both sprites start at the same time. First, the white puppet says, uh, says hello for two seconds, while the gray puppet waits for two seconds. Second, the gray puppet talks while the white puppet waits. And so on, and so on, until the project's complete. Simple. Maybe a little too simple, huh? Let's improve this project with two exercises that you can do. First, let's make the puppet's mouth move whenever they talk. Second, let's actually hear the puppet talk. Now, to begin, click the Remix button to make this project your own. You can then modify it any way you want, and then re-upload it and resave it to the Scratch website for your friends to see. Now, if you want to try these two exercises, Press the pause on this presentation, otherwise I'll give you the answers. Welcome back. 
All right, so now that you've had a chance to work on it, let me show you how it works. Now, if you click on the Costumes tab at the top of either one of the um, puppet sprites, you'll notice that each sprite has a lot of facial expressions for each costume. The Looks group has a block called Switch Costume. If you click on the black triangle, uh, that pulls up a menu and a list of costume names appear. Now these correspond with the actual costumes. Now if you didn't complete the project before, you should now be able to. Now before each say block, we insert a switch to costume block and select one of the top costumes. After each say block, we want the sprite's mouth to shut, so we select the smile costume. Now, the sequence is still the same, but now these three blocks run during the same time that the gray puppet waits. And here's the rest of the sequence for the white and for the gray. The gray puppet will now go through these three blocks while the white puppet waits. And so on, and so on. Now this looks a lot better, but it still could be improved. The project already has some voices for the messages already in each puppet, so we'll use those, but feel free to record your own voice later. Just like the costumes, clicking the Sounds tab at the top of each sprite shows that the sprite has a lot of sound recordings. To hear it, select the recording and push the play button. Now, under the Sound Block group is a Play Sound Block. Like the switch to costume, the Play Sound allows you to select a sound recording. In the same way, when you click the black down, um, I don't know what we want to call it, the black menu button. As you see, it shows the list of the sounds, and they correspond to the sounds in the tab. Now here's our new script. This time we play a play sound block before the three blocks that shows the message. But now we have a problem, since every sound recording doesn't last for a two full seconds. This means that we'll have to change the amount of time the puppet's say block lasts, as well as how long the other puppet waits. Now this took me a while uh, to, to figure it out. But soon, we'll learn some techniques so that you don't have to count the time to wait. But I think we should learn that with the new project since you remixed it. You can come back to this project anytime you want. There we go. We've got one side, and now we've got the other. You can go through and change the numbers to match. How about a new project? The third project we'll do is a scratch version of the Mr. Potato Head toy. Like last time, type in this address in your browser and you will see a new project for us to change. Now, this project doesn't do too much. If you click the button that says Eyes, the eyes will change. However, clicking, under the other, clicking any of the other buttons don't do anything. Now, we should change that. Click the C inside and then the Remix button and let's start to explore this. This project has some sprites with lots of different potato head parts, like different eyes, different noses, and mouths. Each time the next costume runs, the costume switches to the next one on the list. Once the last costume shows, it starts over from the top. Perfect. Now we just have to have a way to have the eyes button, when it's clicked, send a message to the eyes to change. And you see the eyes sprite listens for a message, and when the message arrives, it runs that next costume block. Sprites can send lots of messages, and each message is named. In this case, we'll call it change eyes. Now, how does this message sending work? Well, first, we have a block that starts things off when the sprite is clicked. And we attach a broadcast block to it. It defaults by sending message 1, which doesn't really tell us anything. When you program computers, you really want to name things clearly. So you click the black down arrow to get a list of the messages that you can send. Selecting the last item let us, lets us create a new message. 
That brings up this dialog, and we can type the name of our message, like change eyes. Now the buttons send out the right message, but how do we make something listen for it? Well, just like I did with the potatoes, the puppet scripts, I'm going to line up all the scripts for all the sprites, both the buttons and the potato head parts. Now notice a part, like the eyes, has a block that says, When I receive, and we can click the black arrow to select the change eyes message. We then call next costume. Now that is what's already there. It's now your job to finish this up. Go to each uh, sprite and click this uh, and create this stack to broadcast the message and then pop over to the potato head part to listen for the message. Now you might notice the project doesn't have a body sprite. The body is actually part of the stage. That's right, the stage can have scripts too. The costumes on the stage are called backdrop, and the block you want to use is actually next backdrop, but it acts the same way. Now pause this presentation, finish this project, and I'll wait for you. Well, you sure did learn a lot. You learned how to create new projects and how to change other people's projects. Remember, it's called remixing. You learned about the help system and where Scratch can tell you what a block does. You learned how to animate a sprite using a repeat block with a next costume inside. How to record your voice and play sounds, and then you learned how to send messages between sprites. Whew. So give yourself a pat on the back. But there's still more to explore and learn. Now, I hope you had a lot of fun programming with Scratch. So, see you next time!